Hello, what is up, you guys? My name is Blizzard Version One, and welcome to Reaction Time. It's almost 37. Month of September is now finally here. Or, uh, yeah, finally here for you guys and myself as well, because this video will be coming out on September 1st. Haha. <laughs> Hopefully. Anyway, <laughs> uh, you might notice I don't have my big light on, and that's basically because that's why I'm a lot more wider. Is because on top of that, the video I got queued up as a white screen to start. So apologize for me being so fucking pale. I'm I don't like the sun, but we're having weird power strange power surging issues, which is probably going to be a reason I'm not going to be able to stream again this week. I know it fucking sucks. I want to stream. I want to be able to stream some more, but the issue with OBS like two weeks ago and now all of a sudden the power keeps flipping on and off and keeps tripping and we have to get, keep having to reset the breaker i think i'm gonna have to replace replace the old breaker because it's so old and i don't know how long that's going to take to get here i don't know i gotta still have to look into it i don't know where the disconnect is i don't know any of that so i'm gonna keep looking into that and trying to figure that out uh i'm about to be having a hell of a break from work because i took my birthday off i took the front i took i took the second and the third off and then we're off for labor day so i'm gonna have five days to be able to try and get this shit straightened out so hopefully next week there'll be a stream hell i might do two or three streams next week just to satisfy the masses anyway so we're gonna jump into this uh this is uh, 10 hardest video game bosses that required incredible skill from what culture gaming we've reacted to what culture gaming before and they're pretty good stuff so without further ado here we go <laughs> There's an ongoing conversation at the moment in the gaming industry about video game difficulty and accessibility, and it's a very hard thing to balance. After all, at their core, titles can be about anything they want to be, and if a dev team wants to make something incredibly difficult, then they have every right to do so, as it is a creative vision. They just shouldn't expect every strata in society to appreciate it equally, as it's then become a product that appeals to a more directed audience. <laughs> but on the flip side, making a game that's so easy that everyone can play it is also distancing for those that class themselves as the hardcore which is what led us to think about this oh, list no. of video game bosses <laughs> because the entries on this list are for the hardcore of hardcore and rank among some of the most difficult boss battles you will ever face in modern gaming now sure some of them can be cheesed and i'm stating this clearly now Does as it? i know that there'll be some little oik who claims to have beaten the boss with their eyes closed or something weird like that but if you are to take on these without exploits you will find how do I best put this? Oh yes, your spine knocked right out the back of you. <laughs> With this in mind, I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are the 10 hardest video game bosses that required incredible skill. Number Ow. 10, <laughs> Senator Armstrong, Metal Gear Rising. I never played it. One of Platinum Games' is, 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 is finest to, titles, Metal Gear it. Rising has some of the most exhilarating boss encounters on the market, and sets your blood to pumping plus 10 after you take down any of these excellently designed challenges. However, your blood will be set to boiling when you reach Senator Armstrong, because Jesus, he is tough. Going up against what I imagine that some world leaders actually imagine themselves to be like in real life is a multi-stage affair that will go on for nearly half an hour. Oh it's littered with auto-kill moments and patiently waiting for openings and dodging hits with split-second timing. It's a boss with some of the grandest scale of the game, but at the same time needs to be played like a micromanaging experience. It is a living hell of a battle, and with no checkpoints to help you out, you are in for an absolute slog. Also, I love how the naming of this is classic Kojima, because get it, he's got strong arms. <laughs> oh, what, what you like. Number 9, Ares, God of War. Ooh, now, originally I was going tough. to put the Queen Valkyrie battle on here, but you know what? Oh, We've covered God. a lot on this channel, so let's take a look back into the past with Ares, which is honestly one of the most difficult bosses that I ever battled against as a kid. Even when you're powered up with multiple weapons and tricks stashed up your uh, oh, yeah, goatee, that, that this fight ass. is no small task, and you will feel woefully unprepared when you finally take him on, especially when he powers up to his full potential. The fight with Ares comes in three phases. The first is a simple dodge and range attack affair, which annoyingly lulls you into a false sense of security because as soon as you are done with this starter course, Ares feeds you a buffet of pain. At the end of the encounter, he strips Kratos of all of his powers, leaving him to chip away at his health bar with nothing more than his basic melee attacks, all while having to avoid various deadly environmental effects. It is an absolute nightmare. I knew this wasn't going to be easy because, I mean, come on, Ares is a god and all, but Jesus, give me something. Number 8. Mike Tyson, Mike Tyson's oh Punch-Out. 
You know when you think back fondly on a game I've, and are like, oh. I used to play that when I was a kid. I've never gotten to Mike Tyson because I couldn't get it past. I don't remember what round. It's been so damn long. But, oh, my God. I've heard so many people have so much trouble with Mike Tyson. In their that's, oh, that's nice. What a time to be alive. Well, you know what? Every time I think of Mike Tyson's punch out, I get a wash with a sense of dread as I remember having the life beaten out of me over and over and over again. Kind of what I imagine working in accounting would be like. Mike Tyson is, as you might expect, the last hurdle on your road to becoming the all-time best, but trying to beat him is like trying to climb Everest with your teeth. Difficult, painful, and you're going to lose a lot of that mouth ivory along the way. You might go into this fight thinking that you've mastered the dodge cancel, the once-per-round health boost, and that sweet uppercut, but when you realize that Iron Mike moves faster than any other boxer, has a health bar that laughs at your pitiful attacks, and a punch that will floor you like it's made of ten tequila shots, it becomes clear that this battle is going to boil down to playing rock, paper, scissors on fast forward. All you could do is learn patterns and pray hard. <laughs> Number 7. Alma, Ninja Gaiden 2004's Ninja Gaiden was a game that came along, looked at the current state of video game difficulty and went, lol, okay mate, try this on for size. It's a series that is notorious for its criminally hard challenges, and none encapsulate this better than the battle with Alma. This is a battle that simply could not be won with anything less than pure skill, as Alma will push you beyond breaking point. To come out on top, you needed to be quick, precise, and also be prepared for a lot of horse crap when it comes to this fight. She will shrug off quick combo attacks with ease, move around the map incredibly quickly, and dole out punishment from long and short range. Again, it's a boss that only offers short windows of opportunity, and you best bloody use them if you ever hope to beat this. Number 6. Skolas – Destiny House of Wolves Expansion Skolas, the Kel of Kells, is the ultimate test in both skill and patience for Destiny players. Found at the end of the House of Wolves expansion, this encounter was so grueling on launch that Bungie needed to halve his hit points in a patch in order to make the fight fair. Even oh with this nerf, God. however, you best be prepared for the fight of your life. Now, what makes Skola so tough is his sheer offensive power. In this final fight, he's armed with a rocket launcher that can kill Guardians in two shots from any range, and like all annoying bosses, he has the ability to teleport around the map, which he often combos with a massive ground smash attack. Then there's the endless minions that he brings with him that are used to distract the player, meaning that it's a juggling act for the whole party from start to finish. But to top it all off, he's got this devastating, devouring essence skill, which will kill a party member in 30 seconds unless you can remove it, and if you don't, the whole group will die as well. Excellent. <laughs> Number 5. Orphan of Cost. I hate stuff like that in Destiny. One thing I always do hate is something that you get and you have to juggle fighting enemies, collecting stuff to be able like, uh, one thing we try to do with Kyle and stuff like that, with the giant ogre thing and stuff like that or me and Chris did, or with Kevin, or something like that. Either way, it's, it's on the channel somewhere. Uh, but that freaking ridiculous fight where you ha have so many seconds to go kill one of those stupid wizards, get the orbs, just to be able to unlock the shield to the giant ogre to kill was such a pain in the ass. Bloodborne. So YouTube censorship means that I can never really tell you what I think about this boss, but uh, <laughs> you know what, let's just, let's just throw caution to the wind. I think that he can eat my f I've never played Bloodborne, so I have no idea. I hear it's really good. I hear it's similar to uh, Dark Souls. With a razor blade right up my <laughs> dog nonce <laughs> and ride that log flume all the way to bloody Canada. And this is all down to the fact that midway through the fight, like all good Seki souls born bosses, he transforms. Sprouting wings and thrashing around the battlefield, suddenly this battle goes from trying to balance his relentless attacks with well-timed strikes to a, well, a battle where he simply never stops. My heart gave out so many times that I was as dead as my avatar more often than not during this. And if you try that age-old tactic of hugging the boss's butt, well, he'll brush you off like a fly and crush you with his numerous splash attacks. This is pure agony through and through. Number 4. Bernard Fury 
So here's a weird one. It's not that this boss is massively overpowered or particularly unfair, it's just that Fury's combat system is incredibly quick at the best of times, and here that is dialed all the way up to supersonic levels. You'll be flying around the stage at such a speed that the blur of neon colors, bullets, blades, and energy blasts all become this weird kaleidoscope of pain, and I feel like that should be a, a metal band of some sort. <laughs> this is a DLC boss, assumedly designed to test those who thought that the main campaign was, air quotes, too easy, which it really isn't, by the way, and his catalogue of moves will see him caking the screen in bullets and shooting waves of energy at the same time, as well as attacks that just seem to come out of nowhere, and it all boils down to survival only being possible when you stand in very specific locations which you only have a fraction of a second to figure out. Adapt or die, my friend, and you will die a lot. Okay. Number 3. Nameless King, Dark Souls 3 Now I love this boss battle, seriously. For as much as I died to the Nameless King, I think it's as close to the best experience uh, that I've had that in far. a Dark Souls game. I mean, the battle is tough, the setting is grandiose, the music is delightfully gothic, and most importantly, it feels fair. Yes, I know there are moments where moves seem to come out of nowhere, but this battle can be beaten with patience and perseverance, and it's, it's just amazing. Plus, I mean, let's just all agree, it's a bloody cool battle as well. I mean, dragon lightning and the design of the boss itself. Come on, this is what it's all about, right? In fact, your biggest opponent in this battle isn't the dragon or the king, it's the camera which you will need to unlock if you're ever going to get the better of this boss. Not that it will make the battle easier, it just means that you can see what's burning you to a crisp. It's a nightmare in its purest form and I utterly love it, although my doctor and the cardiac team that support them probably don't. Number 2. King Dice Cuphead yep. It's so hard to pick which Cuphead boss should have been on this list because at their core, all of I've them are tests of skill Cuphead, and reaction but... speed. However, King Dice, for sheer spectacle and sense of overwhelming odds, takes the cake thanks to the interesting slant he has on the battle. Here, the player has to roll their way up the table in order to fight the man himself, meaning that you have to take on a menagerie of mini-bosses along the way, all of which represent different vices and gambling formats. Now, don't get me wrong, some of these guys are pretty lame. I mean, sorry, Chip, you are just awful, but it helps build the suspense as to whether you can even handle King Dice with enough health when he finally arrives. And when it does, in short, it's going to be a swift and painful death 9 times out of 10. Parry jumping the cards is so, so hard because of their random insertion in the pack, and you might find times where you breeze through the first 2 or 3 only to be stung out of nowhere. With the correct loadout, obviously you can mitigate some of this, but honestly, this is a randomized rush from start to finish. Good luck. And number 1, Ishin, the Sword Saint. Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Ah, what better way to end this list than by paying respect to the best game of 2019. Honestly, I have never been as close to breaking my controller and at the same time having such a fantastic experience as I have when playing this title. And choosing a boss for this list was incredibly difficult, seeing as Genichiro, Owl, that damn dirty ape are all brilliant contenders, but I guess it kind of has to be the Sword Saint, and yes, I know you can cheese this boss, I mean, hell, I did it the first time that I beat him, but honestly, this fight, when played straight, is easily the most challenging. And why is that? Well, not only does this battle have a huge four stages to it, but it mixes long-range, devastating short-range, pixel-perfect windows of counter-attacking, and of course, everyone's favorite, lightning strikes. I cannot get over how brilliant this battle was, but I totally understand why people hate it. I mean, after a while, would anyone enjoy the idea of being obliterated over and over for making a single mistake? Yet here is where the game asks you, what have you learned? What skills do you you have. And it's then you realize you have the counters, you have the weapons to exploit the windows, and you have that beautiful lightning counter. And with this, it all boils down to you. Can you remember what to use, when to use it, and when to back off? Well, the answer to that, my friend, is down to you. And there we go, those were 10 of the hardest video game bosses that required incredible skill. I hope that you enjoyed that, my friends. And that was pretty damn dope. I think that was gonna be next. Not not in this episode, not in this uh, deal. But that was pretty cool. That was pretty dope. That was pretty awesome. I actually remember some of those, and I've seen some people fight some of those. So that's gonna do it for this episode of Reaction Time, you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked the video, feel free to hit the thumbs up button. I always greatly appreciate it. I'm sorry if I feel rushed at this, but the power did cut off once in the pre in the middle of recording this. I still have to do the audio and start editing this, so I'm gonna be having some trouble with 
power for now until the end of the day. And then on top of that, my backup battery is not charging the way it's supposed to because of the way everything's going. So it's probably going to cut my computer off at some point. So it's going to be just a giant juggle of power and pain in my ass till I can get this all fixed. So I apologize for all that. Thank you guys so much for your patience. Thank you guys so much for sub subscribing to the channel and uh, helping me out by boosting the watch hours by watching a lot of the videos and going back on some of my cringy bulk stuff. I apologize for that stuff, but I didn't know what I was doing back then and I'm not going to delete them because it kind of shows an homage to how I started and to where I am now. So all being said, thank you guys so much for watching. Oh yeah, if you liked the video, again, feel free to hit the thumbs up button. I always greatly appreciate it. If you're new to the channel, welcome. You can always hit that subscription button and notification bell to be informed every time I upload a stream. I try and upload every single day. Streaming is going to be put on pause until I can get this power situation and my OBS fixed and hopefully we'll, that'll be sooner rather than later. So, all being said, thank you guys so much for watching and as always, I'll see you in the next one. Hey, and peace out! Ah!